You're watching Breakfast from BBC News. It is nine minutes past seven. President Donald Trump has said the U.S. killed Iran's top military commander, Qasem Soleimani, to stop a war, not to start one. But there's no doubt that the attack has escalated tensions in the Middle East. Let's get a view from Iran now. Professor Saeed Mohammed Morandi joins us from the capital, Tehran. Very good morning to you. Thank you for your time this morning, uh, Professor. Speaking to us from Tehran. First of all, could you give us a, a sense of the, the scale of the response in Tehran t to this assassination? Well, there is a great deal of anger, obviously, because this was an unprovoked act of war against Iran, because uh, he was a high-ranking general. It's as if uh, a British high-ranking general was would be assassinated by uh, a foreign regime. Uh, you can imagine the response in the UK. But also, this was an act of war against the people of Iraq, because a very high-ranking Iraqi military official was also murdered uh, during the attack yesterday. The deputy head of the Popular Mobilization Force, which spearheaded the uh, operations to defeat ISIS in Iraq. Looking at the words of uh, President Trump, who spoke uh, yesterday evening, uh, he said, we took action to stop a war. Yes, well, Trump is Trump. and. He's not known to be an honest person. In fact, his Secretary of State, Pompeo, just a few months ago, famously said when we were at the CIA, we had courses to cheat, to lie, and to steal. And he said it laughing in front of an audience. Uh, the United States lied its way into Iraq and destroyed the country by claiming that Iraq was producing Weapons, weapons of mass destruction, as well as uh, having forging an alliance with Osama bin Laden, which were most dishonest claims. And they, as a result, they killed over a million Iraqis, and we have what we have today as a result. Iran's supreme leader has uh, vowed severe revenge. What could that mean? Well, this was an act of war, and uh, Iranian military officials were murdered, as well as Iraqis. The Americans have been assassinating Iraqi uh, combatants who are fighting ISIS uh, repeatedly in the name that they're somehow aligned to Iran. It's ironic that the people who are fighting ISIS, their loyalty to their country is being questioned and used as a justification to murder them. So the Americans just a couple of days ago murdered 30 Iraqi soldiers who were fighting on the Syrian-Iraq border against ISIS. And of course, the reason was because they were opposed to U.S. policy in Iraq and the U.S. occupation, but also because the Americans wanted to weaken the uh, Iraqi government and the Syrian government alongside the border so that ISIS could regain a foothold there in order to uh, prevent Syria from doing trade with Iraq. In other words, the Americans in their attempts to strangle Syria uh, were trying to weaken the Iraqi army positions in that area. So. Uh, and the, the, the reality is that these are the sort of things that we don't hear in the Western media and in especially the U.S. media. But in our region, people see the U.S. behavior and how they bomb people with impunity. They act as judge, jury and executioner. And when the Iraqi prime minister tells the Americans not to do it, they ignore him when he asks for their intelligence, proving that uh, these operations need to be carried out. Uh, they refuse to give him intelligence, obviously, because there is no intelligence. So, uh, Soleimani, uh, President Trump uh, talked, uh, said that he was plotting attacks against Americans. He's deemed to be held responsible for many, many deaths in the past. And President Trump saying he has been stopped for good. Uh, what will change, do you think, as a result of, of Soleimani uh, not being in his role anymore? Well, nothing is going to change. Uh, Iran's policy will be the same. Soleimani actually saved Iraq from ISIS. When, the, when ISIS invaded Iraq, the, the country was about to collapse. And Soleimani himself, General Soleimani, went and took charge of the defense of Baghdad and began training Iraqi troops. And they, alongside Iranian troops, pushed back ISIS until it was ultimately defeated. And the reason why ISIS rose in the first place was because of the American-Saudi 
Turkish Qatari Emirati alliance to support extremism in Syria. Uh, if your viewers read the U.S. Defense Intelligence Agency documents of 2012 and the admissions of General Michael Flynn on an Al Jazeera program, it becomes clear that from early on in the fighting in Syria, the extremists had the upper hand, the Americans knew it, and they uh, supported their allies in the region in supporting these extremists. Okay, Professor calling... Randy, uh, well, thank you very much for your time this morning. That's our time up. Thank you very much. That's Professor Mohamed Maradi speaking to us from the University of Tehran, giving a sense of some of the perspective uh, from Iran itself. It's exactly quarter past seven. We're going to go to Phil.